Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, I feel like this video had to be made. It's more of a rant video than anything. I'm just going to be autoing um, as much as I can some PvP in the background while I talk about this. It's not really negative. Um, it's, it's about the Chloe package. You know, a lot of people have a lot of mixed there's there's been a lot of there's been a lot of mixed reactions um for the chloe package you know some people like bought it some people are pissed off about it i think a lot of people are really really pissed off about it especially on facebook but then again everybody on facebook's pissed off all the time so th there, there's no helping that um but i i think for me i don't really like for me personally i don't really care like i don't <laughs> I, I'm not in a position to spend a lot of money right now. So like for me right now, I think I my opinion is relatively unbiased because whether they have that package, like whether it exists or not, does not really matter to me because I can't spend money um, on the game. I haven't really spent money on the game ever since I moved to Canada. Been completely 100% broke. But at the same time, it's also been a blessing because, you know, like right now I can, I can talk to you guys being like completely unbiased. Like I don't, I, there's no emotions mixed, mixed in, into the, all this, like whatever I say has no emotions mixed into it. I'm looking at it from as much of an objective perspective as I can. Um, so the Mari package, um, is or not Mari, the Chloe. Well, actually, it's the same thing. Like, the Mari was the one before, but the, the Chloe is the one now. Um, it costs $990 to buy the package, and you basically, um, you have to buy it five times to get a light or dark Mari, or dark Chloe. Um, and <laughs> it's really expensive, if you think about it. That's a lot of astrogens. Like, if you, just, just to get that, and then have all the other... Um, Chloe's already costs you 6,000 astrogems so like you you would be spending a lot of astrogems for 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 a monster that really um, for its price really isn't worth worth it like it's it's much much too expensive for for um, how strong the monster is like from a gameplay pr perspective However, the monster is really, really well designed. Like it, it has, um, from a visual perspective, it looks really, really nice. So like that's what, kind of where the, the value of the Chloe is. It basically like the, the monster looks really, really good. Um, the attack animation looks amazing. Like it's just, it's the best I've seen in the game. And, but this is subjective, you know, this is, uh, I can show, I, I think, I think she's still on, she's still on as your assistant or whatever. So I think I might be able to show a random run of it. Right here, the light uh, Trixie. She has a really, really nice attack animation um, where she basically like walk, goes forward and then like all these bunnies fly out of her hat. Like this. Like her attack animation is super, super detailed. Um, so like from a visual perspective, uh, she she's definitely like really valuable. She also has a really nice AOE with the cards. It looks really nice. It's like that that move looks really cool as well. Um. So yeah, like it really is subjective. Like whether you think she's worth it or not, because. From a gameplay perspective, she's definitely not really worth because she's not that strong. But from just like, you know, a design and visual perspective, she's really, really um, well designed. Like her her animation, her um, appearance looks really, really good. So like this, this, uh, this, uh, you know, this monster is like, her, her value comes from that. Um, so... It's, it's really hard to say if she's really worth it. I, I really can't give you guys a clear answer. Like, if you just want to look at it from a gameplay perspective, she's she's a little bit too expensive. Um, but from just a visual and design perspective, she's she could be worth it to some people, depending on your tastes. If you have good tastes or shit tastes. Um, the other thing is, she's... Uh, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about um, is just kind of 
it kind of has to do with marketing. I think the way that uh, 433 did it pissed a lot of people off. Like, I think I think a lot of people are pissed off because um, mainly due to the fact that they introduced this right after Clan Festival. Now, for me, I skipped the last Heroes Festival. I also skipped the last Clan Festival. I didn't really have enough Astrogems to do so. But um, a lot of players really wanted to participate in most of the events that they gave out. And a lot of these events that they have um, usually costs some sort of like premium currency. But they, I think the way that they, they're able to kind of, um, like most mobile games would not be able to have an event, have events like these where um, to participate in the event, you have to use like the premium currency. Um, most most games would not never be able to do that, but Monster Super League has it one like very unique feature. I think it was actually it happened um, by accident, where they're it, where basically the players are able to farm up the premium currency. Um, if you don't know how how to do this, I actually do have a video. I think it's called like how to infinite astrogem farming. If you just search YouTube for infinite astrogem farming, you'll find it. Um, this concept is really, really simple. You take a lot of slimes, you, you catch 16 slimes, you go to this map, you catch 16 slimes. It's also ca called sliming. Um, you catch 16 slimes, you go to your, uh, you know, you go to your monster box, you evolve the slimes to evil 3. Um, and to make an evil 3, you have to make 4 evil 2s. And each evil 2 you make, you get 10 astrogems. And when you get... Uh, when you make your three, four evil twos into one evil three, you get 60 astrogems. So altogether, you get 100 astrogems. And the cost to do the evolution costs 330,000 gold. So basically, what you're doing is you're converting 330,000 gold into um, 100 astrogems. That's the, that's the rough math of it. Uh, there's a, Obviously, there's a little bit of cost on the energy to actually run the stages. But however, there, you also do get a capture quest after you catch a certain amount of slimes. So... Um, the gold kind of like and if you finish the run it actually kind of covers the the cost of um of energy for running the stages as well so like you basically um if you want the highest efficiency usually like you know you could say it's 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 pretty much just 33 uh, 330,000 gold um converted into 100 astro gems a lot of people know know how to do this, so uh, and it actually happened by accident. It's a repeatable quest where you're able to do it over and over again, and people do this all the time where they convert a whole bunch of gold into astrogems, and it kind of happened by accident, but it also created um, an environment where this this game became like really really free to play friendly because free to play players are able to farm infinitely. They don't really have to. Um, they're they're not limited to like you know waiting for the stamina to recharge on on a lot of other games you have to like do that or you have to refill but there's a limited times that that you can refill or else you would have to go and uh, buy like you know you would have to spend real money to buy certain things so you can refill and stuff like that so um, for a lot of players it's not really uh, you know for for a lot of other games I mean it's not. Um, you can't really do this. You can't do do anything similar. But for Monster Super League, um, it created this really, really free-to-play friendly environment where players are able to infinitely farm resources or the premium currency. Um, you normally you don't see this in any other game. And because of this, uh, we're able to have they're able to make all these events where it costs it actually costs astrogems to participate because astrogems in Monster Super League are considered a free currency as well because you know free to play players are actually able to infinitely farm those resources so so technically it's free now uh, for them to make uh, to incentivize people to spend real money they have to come up with clever ways to do that uh, without really completely breaking the game because if they were to remove the ability for players to slime it would just it would cause a lot of players to leave the game. Like I myself would, will leave Moss. Like I will quit Monster Super League if they if they take out sliming. Like I would, I, I would think it's not playable. And one of the most attractive things about Monster Super League is, um, the ability to increase inf efficiency in farming, and um, how I if I can increase efficiency to a certain state, 
um, I can basically profit and um, progress and get better gems and everything at the same time and never stop farming and just basically uh, the cycle just keeps repeating itself so um, you know that's one of the things I find most attractive about, about Monster Super League now with that being said they kind of had to be careful um, you, you saw this last time when they when they introduced the materials for Super Evolution um, how you know, on the first day, people were getting a whole bunch of materials and they were selling that for gold. Now, go since gold is infinitely um, convertible to astrogems, they basically had to hotfix that really, really fast. You saw them do it, like, immediately, like, right after the next day. Um, because they had to keep a certain... They have to keep, a, like, a very, very careful balance of how fast players can actually farm stages and how much gold they can make or, or how much astrogems they can make in a, in a given amount of time. Now... Uh, the reason why they did this, the reason why they had the Chloe package right after the Heralds Festival is because they didn't want players to simply farm astrogens and um, and basically buy the Chloe for free and everybody has a Chloe. But instead they wanted players to not have enough astrogens and have to spend some money and this way they make some money um, off of the Chloe package. Now, from a marketing perspective, I guess this kind of works um but from the player's perspective like this is just this is completely dirty you know like this is this is horrible uh, especially from someone that like you know i'm trying to put my well actually i i was actually in this position as well but no no longer um but in the position of someone that wanted to that wanted to participate in clan festival and at the same time they also wanted to participate in um in uh getting the Chloe package like this just this just completely cucked them all right it just I'll, I'll say it like it is it, it cucked them really damn hard um, so like um yeah it's it's I, I understand like most of the people are really really pissed off from that um and I don't think that it's really that good of a way to market um you know recently I've been I've been reading a lot of books about marketing as well, and these these are these are some pretty damn good books. I've been reading some books like Dot Com Secrets, um, some like financial books as well, like like Rich Dad Poor Dad, and also um, a book called The Twenty Two Immutable Laws of Marketing. And uh, it actually in the, in the book there was a one of the laws of mar of marketing. Um, it, the book was really really good. It showed a lot of big companies and how they're uh, like it gave a lot of examples like it listed the laws and then it listed a lot of companies that basically broke the laws and the result of what happened after they broke a certain law and I'm not gonna go too far into it but um, basically one of the laws was called the law of sacrifice it basically just states that you cannot grab hold of like the whole entire market um, so like the market being like for, for 433 the market would be like players playing this game um, you can't grab hold the whole entire market but you can, you know, you, you basically you you grab hold of what you can, and it's oftentimes it's better to sacrifice, um, like you know, aiming for everybody, and basically trying to, you know, target a certain um, a certain demographic within the within the market in order to like maximize profit, you know. So that, that was that was one of the things I was talking about. I think um, 433 has a really really unique. Um, business model at least compared to a lot of other games um well actually a lot of the top top games actually no a lot of the top top games are like super super whale heavy like summoner's war and stuff um most of their packages are like way too expensive for the regular player to be able to afford um but 433 introduces a lot of like really really cheap packages you know like the monthly package with where it only costs three dollars um and also like the you know where they have like the astro with the ships was on discount last last month and also like the clan festival tickets those are like really really cheap and then like usually players that are willing to spend a little bit of money on games um would buy those because they're real they're they're excellent value for the price compared to everything else that's sold in in the shop um so you know i think 433 makes a lot of their profit from like this small packages um, I don't know if there's a lot of like really really big whales in the game 
I, since the there's not a huge huge player base in the game, I don't think I don't think just having whales can sustain um, the whole entire business because in a lot of other games, um, in a lot of freemium games like these these phone games where it's like free to play, but they have like premium things that you can buy. In a lot of these games. There's the the business model usually works like this. Um, I can't say it's it's like this for all games, but in a lot of games, like a majority of um, freemium games, the business model works something like this. Um, the top one percent of spenders, um, like amount to over like basically over fifty percent of the overall profits. So if you think about it like this, there's a hundred people. There there were a hundred people spending money. Um, you know, uh, spending money doing anything. Like the the person that's selling to those people, fifty well, over fifty percent. Like one person is is uh you know, like one person is spending more than every like all the other people added together. You know, that's that's basically the the unique business model of uh, a lot of freemium games. So, um. <laughs> The, the funny thing is, like, I think 433 has a really, um, like, a really different business model. Like, they, they don't really, they don't really do that. Um, they actually, I think they make a lot of their money from, like, the small packages. And then everybody spends a little bit. Um, and I think that's kind of what they're aiming for with this. But I think they, they kind of did it wrong. Like, they didn't, they didn't really do it right. Um, because w when you do it like this, it, it makes... It pisses people off. Like it pisses potential customers off. Customers being the people that actually spend money um, playing Monster Super League. I like it pisses people off because um, you you cuck them. Like you they they wanted to participate in Heroes Fest. They also wanted to get this package, um, or they believed that they were able to get this package, and then you like. It's not exactly a bait and switch, but it's like uh, you you like you didn't reveal all the information to them, and then you know only after the fact, then you like you you sh you show your hand or some sh some some something like that. Uh, you know, like it's like most people they would go into Clans Fest and then they would spend a lot of money or spend a lot of astrogems. And then afterwards, um, this Chloe package comes out right after, where they're really, really low on astrogems. Now, they probably, maybe if they're not a super whale, they, they, they have a budget of how much money they can spend on the game. Now, if you have this package spaced out to another time, then maybe those people would uh, instead, you know, like, it would be within their budget. And then they can farm half of the astrogens and maybe spend the other half of the astrogens or maybe a little bit less than that like they can farm 70 percent of the astrogens and spend 30 spend money to acquire the other 30 percent of the astrogens um and that would still be okay with them but you know it it's it's like uh like i don't know i, I think i think they just made it impossible like if if this was like spaced out like maybe a few more days afterwards, then those players would have been able to, it would have been been able to make those players happy. Um, but you know if you want me to give a solution on like how they should market, I I really can because they have the stats and I don't. They know which part of the demographic of um, spenders within Monster Super League are the ones that they're aiming for. And they they actually should aim for that demographic. Now, if if Monster Super League was like all the other um, or majority of freemium games, where the the whale like the whale demographic made up for a majority of profits, then they should actually target those. And instead of making this um, a package where people would be able to buy, what they could do instead is just make it cost real money instead. And then this sends a message of, you know, this is, you know, this is like. A, f a premium thing that that only whales can get now at the same time um this monster can't be too strong where where it would affect the gameplay too much because a lot of people would have to complain that you know this it would be 
pay to it would the game would be pay to win you know at that point um but if you were just making like a really visual pleasing monster and doing this then i think majority of people would be okay as long as you're still providing content now um the the danger of doing this is like you know you're straight up selling something and, but at the same time, you still have to provide enough value for the player, for the people who are um, your potential customers or something like that. Um, yeah, I was, I was actually learning about email marketing. It's kind of the same concept. Uh, in email marketing, it, it goes something like this. Like, you know, when you have someone on your email list, um, I think some people, like if they're, if they're in, interested in marketing or if they do do any sort of marketing as a job, they might know something about this. Um, where you provide value up front. Um, so say for example, like you're selling an online course on how to code or some shit like that. Um, you, can, you can do that. And um, you know, you want people to buy your course and learn from you. Um, you usually like you give out a sample or you, you teach them something first for free. And then you like, you be like, hey, subscribe to this email list uh, or I'll, I'll send you um, free information and stuff like that and then I'll give you free stuff. So basically what you're doing is you're providing value up front You're giving them something for free. So in in the sense of um, a game or in, in Monster Super League It would be like making new content. So like when whenever they make like new clan battles new You know when Colossus came out although Colossus kind of sucked, but Colossus could be fixed like if they just designed it better um, <laughs> You know like new content comes out uh, new like fun content that people can enjoy that's like value that's like upfront value and at the same time um like you know in email marketing like you know you could do like every other email so like if say for example you're teaching like a computer programming course or some shit like that um you give them something for free like first so you like teach them how to do a certain thing for free and then the second email you sell them something and then the email after that, you give them something for free again. And then the email after that, you sell them something. And then this way, like, people would would be would want to stay on the email list. So, like, people would want to keep playing the game. If you're talking about Monsters Are Building in this perspective, people will, would want to stay on the game because you're providing free value for them. So, to them, even if they don't spend money, they're still getting free value from you. And they become potential customers because the customers are the people who actually spend money. So... Um, in that sense, like, you know, basically it makes it so that, like, you know, people would, would not complain that, you know, you're not, you're not giving them, you're not making new content because you're giving, like, if you're, if you're actively making new content, giving them free value, then, um, players would not be pissed off even if you were to sell a package, like, every month or so. Like, if you were make, if, say for example, like, if you were making a new update every single month, um, on time, you have something new every single month, and uh, and that that's basically something for free. Like it's not it's not a new like Heroes Fest monster or some shit like that. It's like actual real content that people can enjoy, um, and that's new like every single month. And then you sell them a package for real money every single month. Then people would not be pissed off because you know you're you're giving them free value. And obviously there are certain people who will still be pissed off. Um, but like it's just it's just the way it is. Like usually, if you were to do to do something like that, like if this was like an email list, they would just unsubscribe. They would just you know unsubscribe to stop getting emails, and then that would be the end of that. But then you have a lot of people like since this is a game, a lot of people would um, try to you know complain instead instead of like just completely quitting. Um, and and. Uh, you sometimes it's not it's not possible to please the people who are always pissed off but like there's there there are cases like and i think this is one where like people are justified like people have a reason to be pissed off um and and like it it, it, it can be done so much better you know like, it can really be done so much better where like in, in a way where people would not would not be pissed off um <laughs> But but yeah, it's like you know if you if you were to only aim for the you know the whale demographic, you could do something like this. Like you could sell the package for for free, or not for free, uh, for for real money. And then um, for the people who aren't whales and you want them to stay on the game, then you give them some something else that's free. 
and then you send you send the message that this is not for them like you you, you charge you say this is like you say upfront like you don't you don't like fucking you don't lie to them you like you don't try to deceive them you don't bait and switch them at the last second you just say upfront that this is going to cost real money all right this is this is this is for the whales like you send them that message like this is for the whales and then um you know and then you still like you know every other time like you have this like maybe in the beginning of the month but then like every end of the month you have something that's like completely um completely free that everybody can enjoy like like that's free value that everybody can enjoy new content or something like that then you know people would still stay on the game because then they they enjoy there's the game still updating um and the, this this free content is something that the whales can enjoy as well um so that this basically like is aimed at everybody and then you know at the beginning of the month you can have something like this where it basically is like a package aimed directly at the whales to support um to for them to to support the game or something like that um if you were if the demographic was different and it was mostly like the people who are like in between like they spend maybe like um you know like 30 to 100 dollars every single month on the game then um you know having something like this but instead of not having it right after clan festival having it moved like a little bit uh further apart from clan festival so people would actually be incentivized to to buy this instead um uh, that could also work as well depending on like if if, if they're um if they're like the majority of their spenders is in the, in that part of the demographic and then if if the majority of the profits is from people that spend a little bit of money um every time then making something like this would not really benefit at like the game at all they should just make more like small things that people could buy um you know like spend a little bit here spend a little bit there and then they they make majority of their profits from that it's just i don't know i guess i guess i don't i'm not i'm not a actual expert i don't have a lot of actual marketing experience i've just been learning a lot um so i just thought i just thought i'd share share a little bit on like the solution instead of just like complaining <laughs> of like how how like this is uh how like how i'm pissed off or some shit like that although i'm not pissed off i don't really care i don't have i don't have the money I don't have the money to to consider anything right now. So like for me, I, I just uh, I just keep playing the game however I want, and um, you know I I still probably would spend some money on the game if I if I had money. Like I still really do enjoy the game. Um, but I, I can see I can see how they they kind of didn't do too well with this with the way they did this. But yeah, that that is pretty much it. Um, that's that's really all I had to say. Like, it's just, it's a rant. All right, it's it's just a long ass rant. It, <laughs> but that's that's my opinion. That's my opinion on the whole whole Chloe thing. Um, I think the idea is all right. The monster is okay. The monster looks amazing visually. Um, is it worth it? It's completely subjective because from a gameplay perspective, it's not. Like, she's not that strong. And if you just like, like say for example, the Chloe was butt ugly, but still had the same exact skills, I would not be spending the same. I would not even consider, um, you know, spending that amount of astrogens for her. Um, but because she's so well designed visually, that to some people it might be worth spending um, some money for. So yeah, that's. That's that's how I see it, and and their marketing's fucked up. All right, that's that that's just that's just I guess that that part's my opinion. I think I think they they did a horrible job job marketing, um, but anyways, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's all I had to say. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.